to exchange scientific advancements in the field of environmental and resource economics. We are um, particularly pleased to have the president of the Technische Universität Berlin, Christian Thomsen, here at our opening session. And we are very thankful that the Federal Minister for the Environment, Nature Conservation and Nuclear Safety, Svenja Schulze, also joins, joined us with a welcome address. Um, I now would like to give the floor to the President of the European Association of Environmental Economics and Resource Economics, Christian Goulier, to open the Annual Congress in its first time online format. Thank you. Thank you very much, Georg. Uh, nice to see you, everybody, uh, in particular, Georg, and then the, the President of the University and, uh, and the Minister. Um, uh, welcome to the annual conference of the European Association of Environmental and Resource Economists. Uh, we have, uh, this, is, uh, this is really a historical event. Uh, it's it's uh, exciting, extremely exciting. Um, it's, the, it's indeed the first virtual conference we organize ever. Uh, we, try, we think about that for a long time, but uh, now we did it. Uh, it's also the 25th um, um, conference of the association, so it's also quite of an event. And finally, let me remember uh, you that uh, the, this, we also celebrate the 30th anniversary of the association. Uh, we, without further comments on this, uh, I will be back in a few minutes. I give back the floor to, uh, to Georg. Thank you very much, and it's my particular pleasure and honor to give the floor to our president of the Technische Universität Berlin. Thank you very much, Christian Thomsen. The microphone. Okay, I learned that it's better to speak with the microphone unmuted. Um, Sehr geehrte Frau Bundesministerin Svenja Schulze, dear Mr. Collier, dear EERI members, it's my pleasure to welcome you here at TU Berlin on behalf of TU Berlin for this conference. It's actually the first online conference that I'm opening with a digital um, Grußwort, with a digital beginning introduction. So over the last three months, all of us, all universities have had the trouble of um, conducting teaching and administration from their home offices and Berlin has successfully conducted this also in a number of formats. You support very much, therefore, the decision of this conference to make it as a digital conference, an online conference. Um, it helps reducing carbon footprint also. It's not that we chose it like that, but we're under um, pressure to do it, either have it happen in online format or not have it happen at all. And um, what we all learned, not only in teaching and administration, but also in research conferences, that maybe it's not such a bad idea. Um, maybe um, for some purposes, it's maybe every other meeting, every other year, a digital form, regardless of the, um, of the virus, um, could be a useful format. We're looking forward to that. We just heard that there are more participants now than ever um, in this digital format. Um, that's also because now it's the first time we'll have to see how it develops in the future. Um, the conference's goal, looking at footprints, looking at environment, also from an economic point of view, also goes very much in line with that what Tier Berlin um, is attempting to achieve. We're in the process of founding a center on climate change research, the speaker of which is actually uh, Otmar Edenhofer, who is also um, in the conference, um, looking into making the Berlin Brandenburg area a solution oriented center um, of where one can look at mitigation and adaption um, to the climate change. So very much the conference fits also to the strategic goals of Tier Berlin. So what we want to do is um, host you very much. We're very happy that you're here at this meeting. We're very curious about um, the scientific output from this meeting. Um, I wish you an inspiring and informative time and I'm confident that you all benefit um, from this conference just as much as we and take another step towards mutual, our mutual goal of a more sustainable future. Thank you very much. Georg, the mic. The mic, please.
uh, too much concerned about CO2. Um, <laughs> okay, thanks a lot for that. Thank you very much uh, for the, your kind address, uh, Mr. President, and uh, thank you also for pointing out the relation to what uh, TU Berlin is doing in the field of sustainable future. I give now back the floor to Christian Goyer. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. I think we now go to um, having the minister talking about, uh, I believe, the Green Deal uh, in Europe. And, uh, and so it's my great pleasure uh, to introduce uh, Madam Minister uh, uh, Svetla Schulz, uh, who will uh, talk about um, uh, this, this important issue for our association. Uh, Professor Gollier, Professor Thompson, ladies and gentlemen, thanks uh, a lot. It's a pleasure to be here with you today and thanks for the invitation. Um, you all know that, that this year will be remembered as the year of the coronavirus cr uh, crisis uh, that creates an enormous challenge for, for Germany, for Europe, uh, for the world. And the effect of this crisis that can be felt in, in virtual every area of the li of life many people f uh, fear an economic recession and many worry about the future of their jobs and we are all traveling less spending more time in telephone conferences and video conferences like that and that like we do here today and the format we have here that is a good example for what have changed in the last months and policy policy makers Policymakers must provide answers to acute public concerns. In other words, contain the spread of the virus, restart the economy, and save as many good jobs as, as possible. And in response, the, the German government adopted many emergency measures at a very early stage to, to mitigate the risk of uh, widespread insolvencies and, and job losses. But policymakers has also the responsibility to change things for the better. And this is our opportunity. We in the German government have set the course for the future with a stimulus package adopted at the beginning of the month. A short term economic impetus will make ecological modernization of our country possible in the medium and the long term. And together with the climate action program adopted last year and uh, its mitigation measures, we have launched the largest investment program for climate action ever in German's history. It's nearly 100 billion euros we invest now. And ladies and gentlemen, I worked hard to ensure that the stimulus package did not lose sight of the long-term goal in Germany. We are striving to achieve climate neutrality in our economy activities and in the way of life by 2050. And Germany has created a, um, really a solid framework for reaching the goal with our Climate Change Act and then Climate Action Program 2030. And this framework is set at a EU level by the European Green Deal. The European Green Deal serves as the the foundation of a new, of a modern growth strategy. And I intend to make its implementation a focus of the German EU Council presidency that started uh, next week. And I would like to highlight three aspects that are really essential to the success of the European Green Deal, on my view. The first is a modern industrial strategy. The European Commission's uh, current proposal would be a good basis for this strategy and is promote climate action and the conservation of uh, biological diversity along with technological change and innovation of companies of interest, industries and macroeconomic level. And the second is the finance flows must be channeled in a sustainable direction away from economy dependent on fossil fuels and towards renewable energy, energy efficiency, and other climate-friendly and resilient technologies. And I expect 
the upcoming Sustainable Finance Summit in autumn to provide key impetus for these efforts. And I welcome the commitments of the G20 finance ministers to, to support an environmentally sustainable economic recovery. And third, we should strengthen the traditional instrument associated with climate policy. And I support the Commission's proposal to extend carbon pricing to other sectors, and I welcome the submission of an EU climate law. This will be one, that, that this will be one of the most important dossiers uh, during the German's EU Council presidency. And I know, without a doubt, that is not just the environment that benefits from climate action programs. They are also strong instruments to leverage viable investment, boost Europe's uh, competitiveness and makes our economy more resilient. And this is also shown by the results of a recent survey commissioned by, the, um, by my ministry. Uh, the 2,000 companies surveyed from the environmental technology sector, technological sector are much less concerned about the effects of the coronavirus crisis than other sectors of the economy. And this is something you already know as scientist, as an environmental economist, you support policymakers in linking environmental protection and sustainable forward-looking economic policy. And I, I will just thank you for providing so many important ideas and I hope that uh, we will be able to continue our dialogue hopefully next year in person because I think it is fantastic to have video conferences but we lose also something um, in, in this format. We need to have conferences in person in future uh, to, to have a real discussion and a real exchange. So thanks a lot and I'm happy uh, to join this conference. Beyond the mic. I have to apologize once more. Uh, thank you very much indeed for your kind uh, wishes, success wishes for this Congress, and also your very interesting and important uh, remarks in terms of uh, um, uh, infrastructural advancements in the field of, well, um, viability, resilience, and sustainability of the European industrial structure. It's very important, and I hope that we have, will raise some of these questions in this Congress. Um, I would like to give now back uh, the floor to Christian Collier. Thank you once more. And thank you, Georg. Thank, thank you, Madam Minister. I mean, this is a very inspiring talk. Uh, we, we, let, if you have time, you, you, uh, you could stay until our uh, uh, next, next session, which is a policy session on the EU Green Deal. But I know that you have many other uh, responsibilities and meetings during the day. So uh, uh, again, thank you very much. Uh, could we put our, uh, the slide for the opening ceremony uh, back on, on the screen, uh, Jens, please? Um, so you, you um, so next, next slide. Uh, so, so the decision to make this uh, conference uh, online uh, was, uh, was difficult. Uh, in March, in April, uh, we got uh, 30 people together uh, from the staff of the association, the local organization committee, the scientific committee of the conference uh, that uh, was planned to be in, in Berlin, uh, not virtual. Uh, and the consign of the association, we all uh, uh, interacted a lot so every, every, every day, basically, uh, talking about whether we should just suspend and uh, postpone the conference by one year uh, or cancel and go, by, go to the normal schedule, having the conference in Italy next year, or doing virtu virtual. Uh, the, that decision was not easy. Uh, it has a, a lot of... Uh, uh, operational consequences that was difficult to predict uh, or to anticipate in April, but, but anyway, we took the risk and uh, I think we made the, the right choice uh, in spite of all those uncertainty, in particular the fact that the conference 
is uh, is for free. There is no fee. There is uh, no no financial compensation for all the costs we we will incur uh, organizing this, and that has of course uh, financial consequence for the association. We will talk about that at the general assembly next Monday. Um, we. We have been thinking about doing something virtual for many years now. Uh, and uh, one of the good aspects of the coronavirus is that uh, we, we decided to coordinate on uh, this new equilibrium where we meet uh, uh, online. And I think we will have a lot of things to learn from that. Uh, I'm sure that uh, we will never again doing uh, exactly the the same thing in the same way we used to do in the in the world before, in the world after. I think uh, we will reduce a lot of uh, our carbon footprints of those conferences because part of them uh, will be uh, will be online. Uh, we will talk about that this afternoon at the closing ceremony, um, where uh, I will gather a, a few panelists uh, to start sharing uh, our experience about what has been done uh, today, but also already from uh, last Tuesday when the parallel session started. Um, so uh, it's a tour de force uh, that we, what we are doing now. And uh, well, it's exciting. Uh, we take risks, something uh, will not uh, uh, be realized as we expect, and uh, uh, other things will uh, realize, will, will materialize in a better way than expected. And so we will, we will learn from, from this tour de force. So, so please uh, come uh, this afternoon at the closing session to share ideas about this. Next slide, please. Uh, so the, let, let me advertise one of the many important events that will take place uh, today. One of them is this plenary session uh, that will take place right after this uh, 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 session, uh, opening session. This, this session will be about the, the Green Deal. Uh, you know, many, many things are happening right now in relation to environmental uh, policies uh, and our association uh, must play a role in trying to shape those policies, to shape the, the public debate about this important event. And so so these this big windows associated to the EU Green Deal uh, is a perfect window for us to, to wait in the debate. So uh, I invite you all to participate, to come to the, to the, to the policy session that will take place uh, at uh, 10.45 right after uh, this session. In fact, the Zoom link is exactly the same, so you can just stay along with us at the end of the uh, award ceremony. Next slide, please. So let me thank the organizer, uh, organizer of this uh, plenary session, uh, this panel session on, green, on the Green Deal. It's prepared by the by uh, what we call now in the, in the area jargon, the, the POC for the Policy Outreach Committee that has been established two or three years ago. Uh, Joss Delbeck and uh, Simone Borghese are the two, the two key persons uh, in, the, in managing this, this thing. So the, the POC is all, not only instrumental in organizing that kind of uh, uh, policy session in our conference, but they also spend time organizing other events during the year and trying to uh, coordinate uh, the association efforts toward participate, participating to the shaping of policies in Europe and, uh, and uh, uh, promoting uh, our ideas to, to the public. Yeah, so thank, many thanks to the POC uh, members. Thank you very much. So next, next slide, please. So one of the, one of the uncertainty we face this year uh, with this, uh, with, with going virtual for the conference was um, participation for the member, in particular the financial participation. So we have an annual budget and some of, uh, one of the basic elements of the budget is your contri financial contribution. Uh, and so uh, the uncertainty about whether uh, you will continue to support the association because, in spite of the fact that uh, you don't pay, um, I mean, you, you, you 
you don't pay a fee uh, uh, which there is the membership uh, fee to the association uh, in, in line with the uh, conference was this part of the uncertainty for, uh, for this year and I'm very happy to see that you continue to support the association. Uh, thank you so much. You see that the, uh, the membership uh, continue to be similar to what we had over the last, uh, over the last 10 years. Next slide, please. So th the same thing can be said from uh, about, about institution membership. So you know that we have in institutional members, universities, departments, but also uh, other institutions that contribute to the financing of the association. So you see this year, uh, we continue to grow in terms of uh, institutional membership. And I would like to take the occasion of this uh, slide to thank uh, the, those institutions for their contribution. So thank you very much. Next slide, please. So, so it would be nice if uh, we can expand in terms of uh, membership so because we need to fund many different activities. So the, the, the budget in the next few years will be stressed because not only of the coronavirus, but also because of other uh, long-term uh, evolution of the association in terms of activities. So I think it's important to try to continue to expand in terms of uh, funding. And so uh, let me, let me uh, um, suggest that if you know people who uh, want to become member, please uh, send them the link of the, of the website of the association where they can, they can uh, become a member. So, um, so if you also know an uh, institution, institution in Europe who, which could, would be interested to help us, uh, please uh, either come to us uh, to suggest uh, these uh, additional uh, institutional members or uh, get in touch directly with, the, with them to see whether they're interested and keep us informed about that. So thank you, in, thank you also for helping us in those dimensions. Next slide, please. So one of the important activities we have and that we support in the association is our journals, in particular the environmental and resource economics uh, you may know that the, um, uh, the, the Jan Bateman is at the end of his second mandate as the editor in chief. And so uh, his mandate uh, ended up at the end of the year 2022. So, in order to organize a smooth transition, uh, we started this year a search for uh, his successor. So, if you are interested, uh, if you know someone who could be interested and who has the right skills, uh, in particular the entrepreneurial skills, the managerial skills, and uh, you know the scientific legitimacy, uh, similar to uh, one uh, Jan Bittman, uh, who is the current uh, editor in chief, uh, please get in touch with us. We have a call for a candidate uh, that has been on the air for uh, one month now, uh, and you have the on, we have until the end of September uh, for uh, to collect uh, potential candidate. So again, if you know uh, interesting people for that, please uh, get in touch with us. Uh, next slide, please. So let me. So I know it's not the closing session, so it's not the right time to. Congratulate people uh, for what they did uh, in line with the conference. But however, let me tell you that, as I said earlier, uh, the mobilization of the team, in particular local organization committee and the scientific committee for this conference, has been impressive. I mean, uh, it's, it has been terrific. Uh, so let, let me in particular uh, uh, recognize the, the, the efforts of, the, of these two committees over the last three months that has been so impressive. In, let, and in particular, let me tell you that I have been particularly in touch with uh, several people uh, every, every week preparing for this conference. And my special thanks to are for uh, uh, Georg Meran, that you have seen on the screen before, who is the president of the local organization committee. Uh, Klaus Eisenach, uh, who was the president of the scientific program committee. 
Uh, but uh, let me also thank all the people. So Caroline Fisher and Maria Loreiro for the uh, for their contribution for the preparing the scientific program of the conference. But also uh, other two people that were particularly instrumental in preparing and solving all the technical details we had in association uh, for going online this year. And let me in particular mention two names. Uh, Jens uh, Webbezan Web, uh, and, and, and Paul, Paul Netzoff. Uh, I have seen them for the last three months uh, contributing, solving all the problems. And let me already congratulate them. Uh, and I know in normal time we would have a, a round of applause. Uh, if you can do in your home, uh, please applaud those people virtually. Uh, and I'm sure they will, they will hear your song. The next slide, please. Uh, one of the one of the things that is problematic with uh, going online is um, you know social interactions. Uh, social distancing is particularly bad when you have those uh, kind of uh, virtual conference. So so over the last few days, we decided to improve the conference in that dimension by opening since this morning, in fact, by opening a, a, a virtual chat. Uh, so you have the link to the virtual chat appearing on this screen. It will be, it has been opened this morning at 9 a.m. and it will be there for the, until the end of the day and in particular until the end of the social event that takes place at 7 p.m. tonight. Uh, so please enter into the virtual chat. I'm, I'm excited to go there. I didn't go, I didn't have time to go there and check at this stage, but I'm very eager to see what's there. And I'm sure your curiosity will also be uh, satisfied by, uh, by testing that. So, so it's an experiment. I hope it will work. And if it works, I think it, it can change the way we work together forever. So please contribute to this experiment and join me uh, all along the day, not right now, because we have other business to do before going on the track, but please uh, come join us and, and talk together uh, in, in this uh, virtual chat. Next slide, please. Yes, uh, one sad event happened recently. Uh, you, most of us uh, already know that Karl Goran Mahler uh, uh, passed away last month. Um, Many of us uh, knew him. He uh, was extremely instrumental in the in the uh, first few years, and for in fact many decades, for the last three decades, as a member of the association. Uh, so I would like to dedicate the last moments of my speech to remember uh, and to honor the memory of Karl Goran Mahler. Uh, Tassos Sepapadeas and Art de Zeu wrote a beautiful text uh, that has been published by, uh, by the uh, Environmental and Resource Economic Journal, uh, describing the, Car the Karl Goran's professional trajectory as a pioneer in our field. Uh, we owe him a lot both as an individual uh, environmental economist, but also as members of the association. So thank you, Carl Goran. Next slide. So thank you for your attention. So uh, we need now, so stay, stay online, please, because we have no another important event, which is the uh, ceremony award, uh, the, the award ceremony. So let us uh, switch slide and go to, uh, for the last uh, 15 minutes, we are in fact perfectly on time. I'm sure that my, uh, uh, my colleagues from the local organization committee are happy with the timing. Uh, so uh, slide on the ERIE 2020 award ceremony. Let me open this uh, ceremony now. Okay, simply. No. Thank you, perfect. So next slide. So let me start. Before we go to um, uh, announce the different awardees, uh, let me first uh, have a thought uh, about all the people all, who all along the year uh, have been instrumental in uh, making, looking at the files, reading the papers, uh, and making proposals to the council about who should be who the, the awardees should be. So you have here on the slide the list of all the contributors 
uh, to uh, do this effort. So I would like to uh, thank them for their efforts, and I'm sure as I see their uh, recommendation, uh, I must say that uh, they did a terrific job. Next slide. So the first, uh, the first award is about um, the uh, best doctoral dissertation in environmental and resource economics. Uh, next slide, please. So the award uh, is given to encourage and recognize outstanding uh, and innovative academic achievement in the field of environmental and resource economics. And this year, three dissertations uh, are, I'm sorry, every year, three uh, dissertations are uh, awarded. Next slide, please. So I would like to give the honor of announcing the awardees uh, to Mireille Chiroleu Assouline, who shared the nominating committee, that specific nominating committee, and who also, uh, who has also organized uh, and will chair a session devoted to this award later on in this conference. Yes, so this, this session. Together with Valentina Bosetti and Danny Campbell, we had the difficult task of choosing from the many excellent applications. The three winners of the best dissertation award are Maurizio Malpede, Paul Nitsov, Lutz Sager. I invite you to attend the special session devoted to them. What they have in common? is that they are interested in the difficulties of implementing environmental policies, particularly support for renewable energies, and in the international impact of these policies. Don't miss this opportunity. Thank you very much, Mireille. Uh, that's very interactive. Thank you. That's nice. Uh, that's another innovation. Of, uh, of today. Um, so we would like to, um, uh, we would like to invite you uh, next, uh, next Tuesday in the session dedicated to this award. Uh, the session will be video recorded and made available on the ERIA YouTube channel. So you will have time, if you don't have time to join us next Tuesday, you will have the possibility to uh, look at, the, at those presentation on the YouTube channel of ERIA. So please uh, join us. Next slide, please. Um, yes, yeah, so congratulations to the awardees. I'm, um, so I know most of them. Uh, that's great paper, uh, great dissertation, and I wish them the best for their career. Next slide. So let, now we have, uh, we started this uh, last year, if I remember correctly. So we have ERI Award for uh, ERC grants uh, laureates uh, in the field of environmental and resource economics. Next slide. So, so do, this, this award is to recognize, to recognize the scientific excellence of the ERC individual grantees in our field. We know that it's quite difficult and uh, challenging to get those grants. So congratulations to the, to the winners and see, see who, who they are. Next slide. Uh, so I would, I would like to give the honor of announcing this year ERC awardees to Simon Dietz, who organized and will share a session dedicated to this award. Simon? Hello, everyone. Simon Dietz here. It's my pleasure to announce this year's ERC Grants Laureates in the field of environmental and resource economics. It wasn't necessary to convene a committee to decide on these awards. Uh, the ERC evaluation process took care of that for us. This year's winners are Emanuele Campilio from the Vienna University of Economics and Business, the University of Bologna and CMCC, Elena Verdolini, from the RFF CMCC European Institute on Economics and the Environment, and Ulrich Wagner from the University of Mannheim. Congratulations to Emanuele, Elena, and Ulrich, who will be joining me for a special session in honor of the ERC Grants Laureates tomorrow morning, that's uh, Saturday 27th of June at 11 a.m. Central European time. Join us to find out more about uh, their research 
and also to get insights into the ERC grants process. Thank you very much, Simon, and congratulations to Emmanuel Campiglio, Elena Verdolini, and Ulrich Wagner. Uh, that's great achievement to get those ERC. That's a uh, that's good thing for uh, environmental economics research in Europe. And please think about submitting your own project to the ERC um, uh, selection committee. I think it's important to advertise our work to ERC, which plays an important role in the, land, in the research landscape in Europe. Uh, next slide. Yes, so again, uh, please join us uh, tomorrow uh, uh, at 11 a.m. for a special session on this ERC uh, presentation. So next awards is uh, the ERI Award for Outstanding Publication in the journal Environmental and Resource Economics. Next slide. So the award is a recognition given to an exemplary research published by ERI last year. Uh, uh, and uh, the winning paper is, next slide. So the winner is uh, Climate Change Interactions with Agriculture, Forestry, uh, Sequestration, Food Security, co-authored by Luis Peña Levano, Varzat uh, Tairipur, and Wallace Steiner. Congratulations. We encourage you to read this uh, inspiring paper and to help you doing that, Springer has granted free access to the paper from today until August the 21st at the journal website. So again, congratulations to the winner. Uh, but, but let me also mention, next slide please, there are, they are uh, uh, there were other interesting competitors uh, in this for this awardees, and the committee, the section committee, wanted me to mention three papers uh, that could have won, could have win the the, the the award. I'm sorry for them, but anyway, congratulations for being uh, selected in the in the for the final competition. So. Uh, so these three papers are important. They are superb contribution to the literature. Our congratulations to Partadas Gupta, Tapan Mitra, uh, Gerhard Sorge, uh, Takaiko Kiso, Thomas Seinschner, and Rudiker Petty for this achievement. Congratulations. Next slide, please. Uh, so uh, let me also advertise uh, a special event a link to this uh, area award for outstanding publication in the environmental and resource economic journal it will take it um, it will take so it took place sorry um, uh, it was uh, yesterday yes it took place yesterday afternoon at 3 p at 3 pm sorry you if you were not uh, you were not there you will not have the possibility to attend so again congratulations to the winners. So uh, that's an important award. All, all awards are important. I think this one uh, is uh, especially important. It's somewhat uh, similar to, you know, the Clark Medals, uh, specific for, uh, for uh, Europe and environmental and resource economics. So it's a European award uh, for research in environmental economics under the age of 40. Um, it's, uh, it's given to the environmental economist under the age of 40, that's obviously the constraint, who we judge to have made the most significant contribution to environmental economics to, uh, talk and knowledge over the, the first part of their career. And the winner is, the winner is uh, Antoine de chez le Prêtre. Congratulations, Antoine. We reward the Antoine research on green innovation, in particular in connection to work on patent data. Uh, our warmest congratulations to you for this important achievement, Antoine. Again, if we could have a round of applause from your home, that would be great. I'm sure Antoine will uh, hear something about that. Next slide, please. So we made a couple of questions to Antoine about his research and about his ideas of important research to be carried out in the future in this domain. We would like to share his interesting replies with you. Antoine, the floor is yours. I 
I think the article that I'm most proud of is uh, my paper on the impact of the European carbon market on low carbon innovation, joined with my co-author uh, Raphael Kalel from Georgetown University, uh, because it's probably the most impactful paper I uh, wrote. And what I'm particularly proud of is uh, that it had an impact both in academia and in policy. So the method has been used by other researchers to look at other outcomes or other policies like the Chinese carbon markets. I even heard uh, the paper is being used by colleagues uh, for PhD or master classes, which obviously is a fantastic recognition. And the paper was uh, also very useful for policymakers to show the impact that environmental regulation has on green innovation. And you know, given the time it takes to write a paper like this, uh, it being useful both for academics and policymakers is everything you can dream of basically. So I was actually asked uh, to give a talk last summer at the University of Ottawa on research avenues on my field of research. And it made me realize, uh, perhaps depressingly so, given that I've been working on this for 10 years, that we actually still know very little about the impact of uh, environmental policy on innovation. I mean, we know the basics, but we still know little about impact throughout the supply chain, for example, about knowledge spillovers to and from clean technologies, about crowding out effect uh, on non-clean in innovation, about the impact of clean innovation on firms' competitiveness, and we also know very little about which policies work in practice and in which contexts. You know, when do market instruments work best? When is command and control regulation required? What is the best policy mix in terms of technology push and demand pool policies? So these are just a few thoughts, uh, but certainly enough to keep me busy for a few more years. Thank you. Thank you, Antoine. Uh, great, great talk uh, share with us. So we have another uh, few uh, uh, awards uh, um, uh, re reception uh, in the next few minutes. So we are running out of time. So the next uh, award is for the European Practitioner Achievement Award. Uh, so um, the award recognizes practitioners in the policy or business arena who have uh, made signal contribution in the application of fundamental economics ideas. Uh, which is very important in our field. Uh, this next slide. So this year we uh, are honored to give this recognition to Arthur Runge Metzger. Uh, Arthur received uh, this award for his past and present roles uh, and his achievement within the EU Commission and in particular for his uh, active role in promoting the European Green Deal. Uh, a warmest congratulations to Arthur if you hear us uh, and gratitude to him for uh, uh, passing uh, important research idea to the policy arena. Next slide. So this award recognizes, um, um, yeah, no, sorry, I'm lost here. We, we ask him uh, some uh, very topical question on the current financial crisis and the COVID-19 crisis. Uh, on the path of, the Europe to, of Europe to reach the climate neutrality by the year 2050. We would like to share with you uh, his very inspiring replies. I think there are both similarities and stark differences between the financial and the COVID crisis. They are similar in as far as both represent global challenges that will require a well-coordinated global policy response. And I think in the end, we did quite well to get ourselves out of the financial crisis. They are different in terms of scale and nature. Many more people have lost their jobs Many businesses had to close overnight. Entire countries went into a lockdown. The economic recession is going to be unprecedented. 
that will require a very bold policy response. And that bold policy response will have to take into account other challenges we are facing as humanity. That is climate, that is biodiversity, that is the consumption of our natural resources. I think yes, for three reasons. First, the technologies um, that we require in order to reduce greenhouse gas emissions are market ready and the prices of these technologies are falling. Second, we have a carbon price in Europe, a regulatory framework that is providing incentives to all investors, whether they are companies or households, to invest in these clean technologies in the coming decades. And third, we have a huge willingness on the side of companies, on the side of households, to go along with us this way. They all have been making plans on how best to invest into this deep transformation of the economy. The COVID crisis, of course, is not helpful in that respect because it makes investors, households, companies hesitate to invest uh, into the new technologies. And here is a particular role for governments again in order to make sure that the stimulus packages that we need in order to get the economy out of the recession to provide for jobs, for income, for people um, into the right direction so that we can bounce forward in the transformation and even fast track some of the investments that will have to be done in order to get us to climate neutrality in the year 2050. Thank you very much, Arthur. Uh, and thank you in particular for your contribution to uh, the European Green Deal and the very ambitious uh, European uh, climate policy. So let me finish, and we are running out of time. Sorry about uh, the participant for the next panel. Uh, with the ERIE Fellows uh, that was uh, put in place last year, with this appointment, we would like to recognize our standing contribution in the field of environmental and resource economics. And this year, we are uh, very honored to appoint ERIE Fellows, uh, three pro prominent colleagues. Uh, next slide. So, uh, Anna Alberini, uh, Guy Rachen, and Carlo Carraro. Congratulations to them. Uh, that's uh, a great ach achievement, and we are happy that the association was able to recognize you. So, again, if you could do a round of applause from your home, that would be great. So, finally, we collected a few words for each of them. Please. Well, thank you very much for this award, this uh, Erie Fellowship Recognition 2020. Uh, this is a very prestigious recognition. And I'm very grateful to the association for awarding that to me. Um, I would like to point out that this is a wonderful association. Uh, I've been a member of it for many years and I've been attending the conferences uh, that the association puts up every summer uh, for a very, very long time now. I would recommend all members to actually invite colleagues and other professionals to join. And once again, I'm really, really grateful. I'm very, very pleased of this award and I would like to thank you one more time. Thank you, Anna. My name is Geir Arsen. I would like to express my gratitude towards ERI and his council for appointing me as an ERI fellow. I'm very honored that my contributions to the economic analysis of intergenerational justice and sustainable development have been acknowledged in this way. The climate crisis makes these issues even more pressing. I hope to be able to support the important role that area plays in this context also in the years to come. Thank you, Geer, and congratulations. I'm really glad to be a fellow of the European Association of Environmental and Resource Economists. I've been working for the association for 30 years. I organized the first annual conference uh, in 1990 in Venice. I organized the first, uh, the first World Congress, uh, the, the Congress of the two main associations. Now it's the Congress of all associations of environmental and resource economists. 
I've been twice in the council and I've been the president of the association and I'm the one who introduced the fellowship. I was the fellow, I was a fellow of the American Association of uh, Environmental Resource Economists and I thought it could be important for our own association to have fellows uh, who can contribute to the future development and success of the association. And I'll do my best as a fellow and I'm very pleased and honored to be a fellow to support the association, to enhance its impact in Europe and worldwide. Okay, thank you very much, Carlo, and thank you in particular for all your contribution to the association. So this, award, this year's award ceremony is now uh, over. Once again, our warmest congratulations to the awardees. Thank you for your attention, and I give the floor back to Georg. Well, thank you very much. It remains for me uh, to thank everybody uh, attending this opening ceremony and pointing out very quickly to join now the plenary keynote on the European Green Deal, which is very important, and also pointing out once more that we have this virtual coffee special chat where you can go over the day to have chats with friends and people as well. Thanks a lot, and I give the chair now to Simone Borghese and to Christian Gaulier. Thank you very much.